Hey everybody, this is Rob. Today I have another video for you that involves an unboxing of an old console. This is something that came to me via Hong Kong. It is a Japanese system. It's actually a couple of Japanese systems put together or a Japanese system and an add-on if we're really being technical. Um, I have one of these in its US form. It's called a Turbo Duo. But what's inside here is a Super CD-ROM 2 or as some people will call it, it's, I think the actual name is CD-ROM-ROM, -ROM, which sounds ridiculous, but they're Japanese, so you know, they create really weird names for things. Uh, but it's written Super CD-ROM squared. In any case, I'm just gonna call it Super CD uh, and a PC Engine, which attaches to it. So together, they pretty much make a Turbo Duo. The reason that I got this uh, is that I have a Super Graphics that I wanted to hook up the Super CD-ROM to. To. That's just a ridiculous name. Uh, but anyway, I wanted to hook up the Super CD-ROM to the Super Graphics in order to be able to play all the possible games um, in conjunction with an arcade card. It's going to get really complicated. Um, I'm just going to open it. This thing is... Uh, I think it shipped, yeah, it shipped back in March. That doesn't seem right. There's a little slip here that says March 6th, 2016. I don't know if that's correct. I don't think I've had it that long. I know it's been, it's been sitting in the corner of my arcade for a while because I haven't had chance, uh, had a chance to do this little video and I've had other projects going on and so I don't know. This box looks pretty beat up. It's got fragile all over it. Uh, think about tracking from Hong Kong, at least from this guy. The shipping was pretty expensive. It was 60 bucks. Uh, I've heard of people getting stuff from Japan and they pay, you know, exorbitant amount of money for shipping, but they get them in, you know, three to five days. Some guy got it in two days. Uh, this took quite a bit longer. It actually got the, 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 the tracking was real crazy. It came from Hong Kong and then immediately, like the like two days later, it was in Chicago. And then I never saw an update again. The United States Postal Service tracking is garbage. And, it, you know, every day I would check it and check it. And I'm like, why is it not moving from Chicago? And then like a week after that, it showed up. Man, maybe like 10 days total. It showed after it got to Chicago. So it took about two weeks to get here. But anyway, enough about the shipping. It's, I'm just, I'm a little worried about it. I don't know why it's got these little cellophane string type things on it uh, they're not very functional in fact I think I can just slip it off uh, yeah you can so and this is a box certainly not made for shipping video games I don't even know what it is it looks like it's German can anybody read that I don't know what that says Erzuid und Abult in Rus Weinkeller. I'm sure I butchered that all the hell. I, I don't know what the hell that is. But anyway, uh, where do I start here? This box really is kind of garbage. So I hope the contents are safe. The thing is, with this particular system, it's not that it's fragile because of the build, but a lot of these old systems, uh, NEC systems from that era, just stopped working because of the capacitors that they used to build them were garbage, and they start to leak and fail, and they can tear up stuff inside of it. Uh, they can uh, corrode things. What is this? This is this is what you get when you look at this. Do you remember the Backtrax video where that very nice person from, I don't know, Midwest someplace, Minnesota or something, packaged that shit really awesome? This is not. So I am really hoping, oh my god, this is uh, this is the exact opposite of uh, good packaging from that other Backtrax system. I've heard some really good packaging stories from Japan. Oh my goodness. Alright, well, it's, I guess, at least they individually bubble wrap the components. Um, but who would, that doesn't, that looks like, I don't know, like parts of a cooler or something. Well, this is nicely bubble wrapped, I guess. And that's the important thing. Um, that's the part I care about. That's the CD-ROM-ROM. 
thought I wasn't going to say that, but... And what did I get here? I got an NEC controller of sorts. So, the guy that sold this on eBay sells multiple. He doesn't change the picture. It's one of those, like, hey, it might be different from the picture because I'm just reusing the picture over and over. Uh, but... And he also said that you may get a third party controller, you may get a first party controller. This is actually a first party controller. I'm not familiar enough with the NEC consoles to know which one this came from. Uh, it says NEC PI PD8. Uh, it is a two button. I didn't get like an Avenue 6 six button controller or anything, but that's pretty standard for an NEC console. You get two buttons uh, and they do have uh, turbo features here on the individual buttons, but it's pretty much like an NES controller, very close to it. Got a pretty good feel. I never was a fan of this disc. I like the straight up cross pad, but I, I was always under the impression that the Nintendo guys had a patent on it and everybody else had to do the circle thing to approximate the cross pad. I don't know if that's true or not because Microsoft put on a, a straight up cross pad on theirs. I don't know if the patent had, you know, uh, wasn't any good anymore, or it you know, lapsed, or I don't know. I doubt that because I think Nintendo would keep the patent as long as it could. Looking for other stuff in here. Uh, this is probably the power supply. So it says here Duo slash Super CD ROM 2. And I think this is a universal power supply, which is cool because in Japan they have a slightly different voltage. Uh, they, I believe, geez, I, I should have looked this up before I did the video. I think they have 100 volts and we have 120 or 110 or something like that. It, it's, it's slightly different. Uh, you can actually plug Japanese appliances in US uh, outlets. They're the same kind of outlet. They will fit, uh, you know, it just looks like this, but they're just different voltage. And let me look at this thing here. It says input 100 to 240 volts. Um, doesn't really tell me much. I mean, in China, so not that the, the official NEC one's not made in China. It probably, it might have been made in Japan, but anyway, this is just a third party knockoff. Um, it's supposed to work in America and uh, Japan, so that's cool. And just out of curiosity, uh, so the NEC controller is made in Taiwan, Republic of China, or maybe not anymore. Uh, the cool thing about these controllers is they do have these uh, turbo individual turbo buttons or turbo functions for each button and a little trivia I don't know a lot of NEC trivia uh, like most Americans I kind of didn't even think about the turbo graphics very much it was just kind of in passing uh, it was one of the first systems actually it was the first console to have a CD-ROM attachment and that was really cool but it's super super expensive and the games um, were kind of few and far between. There were a couple of really cool games, but they just never really caught on. Uh, quite honestly, the games are probably better than the Sega CD games. And uh, it, I mean, it was just, NEC did a terrible job marketing this. Let me get, let me get to a little background on this, you know. Oh, the, what I was gonna say, the, the bit of trivia that I do know about this is that um, the fastest setting does 15 shots per second. And that's because one of the guys that worked at either NEC or Hudson Soft, I forget. In my mind, they're interchangeable. I know they're not NEC's Nippon Electric Company. Uh, they're the manufacturers of the hardware. Hudson Soft uh, makes the software for a lot of the games, and I think they actually develop some of the chips that go inside of the uh, NEC consoles, like PC Engine, Turbo Graphics 16, Turbo Duo, and Super Graphics. But in any case, uh, one of the guys that worked there, I wish I knew his name, uh, bad research, I apologize, but. Uh, he could do 16 shots per second with his finger. He could just vibrate his finger so fast that he could do 16 shots per second. So as a tribute to him, they made the fastest setting 15 shots per second just so that he could be faster. Um, so anyway, that's kind of a cool little trivia there. Let me uh, open these guys up. Now, this is a core graphics. I'm not sure if it's Core Graphics or Core Graphics 2. I tried to look up the difference and it seemed minimal. Um, it was, most sites just used to say they were interchangeable. Uh, let's see. Let me get this off. But this is an actual fully 
full-fledged uh, console. And the cool thing about this one is it's supposed to be universal. Oh no, I think that might have a problem with a, with an EverDrive. Yeah, worry about that later. But uh, this is a, so it's a Core Graphics 2. This is a Core Graphics 2. And in fact, this color scheme seems pretty close. So this is probably a Core Graphics 2 controller. Well, these little styrofoam things everywhere. But uh, so this tiny little thing is a fully, it's a, it's a full console. Uh, it takes turbo chip games or hue cards as they're known in Japan, um, which are a little credit. I should have brought one with me. And in fact, I'll, I'll bring one a little bit when I stop the video and, and do another part. Um, they're just little credit card sized, uh, you know, maybe three or four credit cards thick uh, chips. They're, well, they're chips on a credit card size. I, I, don't, I hesitate to call them a cartridge, but I guess they are. Um, I guess it is. And they just slip in here and you, you plug in your power here and you have the AV out here. And this I think is the region mod switch, which is kind of janky looking because it looks like it had like a cap or something and they just pulled it off and now it's just kind of sticking out. But uh, here's the power switch and then one controller port. All the NEC consoles came with one controller port. Um, so if you wanted to play multiplayer games, including two player games, you had to buy a, a turbo tap or uh, I'm not sure what it was called in Japan, but it's just a, a, you know, a little device that had five controller ports that plugged into here so you can plug in additional uh, controllers. But anyway, it's a really cool, compact. I mean, it's a, uh, okay, so you see the brand in here, it's a PC Engine. So PC Engine was the original release of this console and it came over as the TurboGrafx-16. The PC Engine itself only output uh, RF video. So the Core Graphics and Core, Core Graphics 2 removed the RF output for the video and switched it to AV out, so they're composite out only. Um, I'm planning to modify this, of course, like I do everything else for RGB. And, um, but I didn't really buy this package because of this. It was just kind of a cool add-on um, it's just, uh, you know, it came part, it came along with this thing, which is what I really wanted. Uh, this is the CD-ROM 2 add-on, or the CD-ROM-ROM. I admit, it's, it's, it's kind of growing on me, CD-ROM-ROM. Um, wow, this is actually in much nicer physical condition than I thought it was going to be. Uh, the one in the picture on eBay was sort of faded yellowing a lot of the consoles from the 80s especially the white ones uh, super nintendos and nintendos uh, commodore 64 stuff like that they had a problem where the the plastic that they used to manufacture uh, the console cases over time would yellow and there was thoughts you know there was rumors that it would have to do with if the machine came from a, a, a household that had smokers in it or that it was in direct sunlight and maybe the sunlight might have something to do with it but I think, I think it just yellows on their own. It, maybe sunlight makes it yellow more or faster, but um, it does happen to the gray consoles as well. So there are a lot of gray consoles that have some yellowing, but this one looks to be in fantastic condition. It's actually pretty amazing. Um, I guess I got lucky. Now, the thing with these things is that again i was talking about the capacitors they fail all the time on these the guy that sold this to me said that they had replaced the bad capacitor so that's why i bought it from him as opposed to from somebody else is because nobody else was mentioning that uh they had fixed capacitors so it's sort of a chore to get in there you're, you're basically desoldering these you know decades old capacitors from the motherboard and replacing them with new ones and it's it's no small feat. I did it on my Turbo Duo. Most of them I missed a few, and it was it was very time consuming and cumbersome. And I wouldn't do it again. I'd probably just pay somebody to do it. So hopefully that's taken care of. Normally, what happens when the capacitors die? The first thing that goes is the audio. When you try to do CD music, it will cut out after a while or be garbled or something. Just not work at all. And in really bad cases, the capacitors will die in such a way that the machine won't even boot. So. Uh, let me show you how this works. 
This is, again, the main console, and this is the CD-ROM, which is sort of a joke how, how large it is. And it literally just kind of plugs right in here. Just right there, it's plugged right in. And looks kind of goofy. Um, <laughs> that CD-ROM is so much bigger than the console. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's all you do. And then there's a uh, power adapter that lets you share power. Figure out which way it goes from the CD-ROM to there it is the core graphics too. So you put the AC power into here, and that powers the CD-ROM, and then it just kind of jumps the power out to this thing. Um, yeah, it's pretty simple to hook up. Here is the AV out, and there's an AV out for the core graphics too, and there's also an AV out for the Super CD-ROM too. And you'll see that the logo there says CD-ROM squared, which is where the CD-ROM ROM stuff comes from. Um, so yeah, it, now it comes with standard composite video, but if you know me, uh, this thing's gonna go RGB. I bought an RGB kit from a guy on the NeoGeo.com forums, and uh, you're supposed to just swap out this uh, AV out. It's a five, it's a five, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, it's a five pin uh, AV out, and you swap it for an eight pin. You retain the five pin uh, functionality from this, so you can still use this, but it adds three more pins, which are the RGB. So I'll be doing that pretty soon. But for for now, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go up, I should have brought them with me. I'm gonna go upstairs and grab a Super CD-ROM, well, a few Super CD-ROM games, and some turbo chip games, some American and some Japanese because it does say it's universal. And then, you know, we'll try it out. I do have a capture device, so we'll be able to capture the video. Um, a little little bit more story of why I wanted this in the first place. I have a super graphics that is essentially the sequel or the, 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 the next in line uh, for the PC Engine line. So I went PC Engine and then Core Graphics and Core Graphics 2 were just kind of redesigns of the PC Engine, but it was essentially the same console. It's like the uh, the top loader NES versus the original toaster in the United States anyway, or the Famicom to the Famicom AV. It's just a redesign. Uh, but the sequel, the, the core graphics and the PC Engine and all that stuff, they're all 8-bit CPUs with 16-bit graphics processors, and they were originally supposed to compete with the Famicom or the 8-bit Nintendo. Um, but they ended up competing more because it was so powerful for the time. Uh, it ended up competing more with the Super Nintendo and the Genesis, uh, especially in the United States. It's actually called the Turbo Graphics 16. Turbo Graphics 16. They renamed it um, to kind of emphasize the 16-bit nature of the system. But in reality, it had an 8-bit CPU and a 16-bit graphics processor. So it was kind of like, eh, it's kind of 16-bit, kind of not. Uh, but you can't really argue with the output of the graphics because the graphics were amazing. Compared to the Nintendo, they blow them away. Uh, it's got better sound, better graphics, uh, it's just an all around better hardware. The machine's just amazing. Uh, and it's just in this tiny little package. You don't have to worry about the crazy 72 pin blink blink light with blowing on the cartridges, none of that crap. Um, it just didn't have the marketing in the United States. In Japan, the PC Engine, aka TurboGrafx 16 here, was actually uh, really, really, really popular. There was hundreds and hundreds of games uh, released for the, the Hue card, the chips, and the CD-ROMs in Japan, just so many. In America, it really flopped. It came in a distant third in America. In Japan, it was, uh, depending on the time, it was you know first or second uh, most popular system in Japan. So, and in fact, when the Turbo Duo was designed, which is basically a combination of these two into one unit, uh, NEC had kind of given up on America already. And so this other group formed called Turbo Technologies Incorporated, TTI, and they marketed and sold the Turbo Duo in, in, in America. I remember them sending a VHS uh, promo video. Uh, it was basically just a, a long infomercial on tape. They used to do that all the time. You'd get like, I remember getting a Donkey Kong Country one. And, and uh, anyway, so these companies would just mail out these VHS tapes with promo videos. And uh, I remember getting for the Turbo Duo and I wish I still had it. But uh, I ended up picking up a Turbo Duo used from a guy back in back in the day, and I really liked it. But I ended up selling it to buy uh, I don't remember what I bought. Bought some other console, you know, I was a broke college kid, and I, I rebought it uh, about a decade ago. 
and uh, then the, the, the capacitor problem happened anyway it got fixed but uh, long story longer I wanted this super CD-ROM too because I want to attach it to a super graphics so after, after as I was saying the PC engine slash turbo six turbo graphics 16 was competing with the Super Nintendo and Genesis although it was supposed to compete with the regular Nintendo um, but the true sequel was called a super graphics and it was a quite a beefed up version of the TurboGrafx 16, but it was backwards compatible, which was really cool because the Genesis was not backwards compatible with the Master System, you needed an adapter, and the Super Nintendo was not backwards compatible with the NES at all. There's no, not, not even an adapter. So the Super Graphics was backwards compatible with the PC Engine. Uh, the problem was it was really, really expensive, and there was no support for the games. There were only five dedicated super graphics games that were ever released for the super graphics and then two other games that had um, were basically a modified well they depending on what system you'd put it in either pc engine or super graphics they give you a different type of graphics so they were enhanced i guess you could say they were super graphics enhanced so there was a total of seven games that took advantage of the super graphics hardware five dedicated ones and um, it was just really expensive and I guess people were satisfied. I mean, really the, the PC Engine or the Core Graphics uh, with the Super CD-ROM 2 attachment did such a good job that people didn't feel like they needed a Super Graphics. So it kind of just went by, they fell by the wayside. They never got released in America at all. So I bought the Super Graphics about, I don't know, early 2000s sometimes for really cheap. And uh, there's another adapter that allows you to hook up to a CD-ROM. I don't wanna get into all that stuff. But essentially, if I plug this Super CD-ROM 2 into the Super Graphics, uh, then I can play all the Super Graphics games, all the PC Engine games, and because uh, I, I bought a Turbo Everdrive, which I haven't even opened yet, but that will play Japanese and American games, so I can play all the Turbo Graphics 16 games, and then it'll play all the Super CD-ROM 2 games and the original CD-ROM 2 games from both America and Japan. You essentially have a system that plays all the possible games. And just by combining Turbo Graphics, uh, sorry, the Super Graphics and the Super CD-ROM 2. Now, the one thing it won't do by itself is play arcade CD-ROMs. Now, I know this is getting super complicated, but that's okay. I don't expect you. I mean, if you're if you're watching this and you already know this stuff, I don't need to tell you again. But you know, um, uh, just to finish off the story, there's uh, system update cards you can put into the card slot that will update the either the, so, the software for the CD-ROM system and give it more memory. So there's an arcade, it's called an arcade duo or arcade pro uh, credit, card, credit card size card, an upgrade card you put in here and it gives you additional memory so you can run uh, bigger, better looking games. And so if you have an arcade pro, well actually it would be an arcade duo card for Super Graphics and Super CD-ROM 2, then I could play everything. Every possible game ever released for that, for that era of games would be possible to play on that. Um, the thing is, I haven't opened that Super Graphics since I bought it. I remember taking a look at it when I bought it, but I never, ever, ever plugged it in. And the likelihood that the capacitors on that thing are fried or, or leaking or dead uh, is very high. So I'm going to unbox that thing. And that thing, I found out today that my Super Graphics, it was, it was sort of a dilemma uh, <laughs> uh, for, for me as a video game collector and a video game player because the super graphics that I uh, had bought so long ago and just kind of stored in my closet ended up being unused and brand new. And so as a collector, I, I opened it up. I'm like, oh my God, this thing is unused ever. It's totally brand new. I don't want to open it because it'll lose some of its value. And I'm not really a collector or a player because of the values of the games, but still it's sort of like, man, do I really want to open this thing up? But as a game player, yeah, I do. I do want to open that up. Uh, it's like when I bought my PlayStation 4 20, 20th Anniversary Edition. Um, except for that, I have other PlayStation 4s I can play. I have multiple PlayStation 4s. But for the Super Graphics, I have the one. So once I open it, it's like, well, there's one less brand new Super Graphics in the world. So I, I don't know. I, I, if I, I might unbox it. I'm, I'm not sure yet. I'm still thinking about it. The other thing I could do is just buy another Super Graphics, a used one, just so I don't have to disturb the brand new one I have. But 
you know, I'm just looking at it and the prices are about two to 300 bucks and I don't really want to do that right now. I have a Vegas vacation coming up and, you know, I've been remodeling my bathroom and doing all those kinds of stuff. So I really don't have the extra cash right now, but maybe later if I decide not to, this is actually a good enough thing here going on. So um, anyway, like I said, about 30 minutes ago, probably, who knows, uh, let me stop the video here real quick and let me go grab some games so we can try this out and let's cross our fingers that everything works because that box was, in, was a really shitty box. The, the quality of the, or the condition of these systems is spectacular though, so pretty happy about that. So, okay, without any more um, delays, let me stop this video and go grab some games. I'll be right back. Hey everyone, I'm back. And as you can see, I brought a bunch of stuff with me downstairs. Um, I went ahead and just brought every TurboGrafx related thing I could find, save an extension cable, which is just an extension cable for the controller. Nothing really to see there. Um, first of all, I wanted to show that, or point out, you've been seeing them the whole time, that there's a couple of Hudson Soft games playing on these PVMs over here, and they're not being played on NEC consoles. So unlike Nintendo and Sega, who would never, ever, ever let their mascots appear on other systems, NEC had no such problem doing so. In fact, Bonk is the equivalent of Sonic or Mario for NEC and the PC Engine Turbo Graphics. And you can see that there's a version of Bonk here that's not being played on a Turbo Graphics or any kind of NEC system. It's actually being played on a Super Nintendo. Uh, so this one's called Super Bonk, and as you would guess, it's just a Bonk game for the Super Nintendo. I believe it's an original game too, I don't think it's a port of anything, um, I could be wrong. I know they made Super Bonk 2 in Japan, uh, they didn't come over, and his name is not Bonk in Japan, it's a, so in Japan, remember this, the Turbo Graphics is called PC Engine, and I think it's called, the uh, Bonk's PC Genjin. Uh, some kind of play on words, he's a cave map something, I'm not really sure. It's not important. The important thing is that Bonk is on a Super Nintendo. That's that's the same thing. I, I used to work at a video game store when I was in college and you know somebody would come in inevitably and say yeah I want to buy Mario for the Genesis and we're like no Mario doesn't come out for the Genesis it's over Nintendo and we're like oh well my cousin has Mario for the Genesis and I'm like well your cousin's full of shit because that, that would never happen although I did find out later there's bootlegs uh, made in Brazil and China where they do bring over Mario and Sonic and cross cross-pollinate those systems, but uh, that's totally under the table and not legit. But NEC and Bonk, no problem. He's on the Super Nintendo. And over here we have another big NEC title, which is Bomberman. And this is actually being played on a Neo Geo. Uh, Neo Geo had an arcade release. Well, everything Neo Geo, there was an arcade release because it was an arcade system. Um, but there's a, it's a two-player version of Bomberman, which not so fun. I think you can play... Yeah, you can play three player or four player if it's the computer. I don't know of a way. I've never heard of a four player Bomberman for Neo Bomberman. I think it's just one player, two player versus the computer. Um, but anyway, that's another big system uh, seller or well known for the system. I just I don't know if it's a system seller. I personally love Bomberman and I've bought um, several versions of Bomberman over the years. In fact, I should also mention there's a version of Super Bomberman there's a version of Bomberman called Super Bomberman for the Super Nintendo, which is fantastic. And I always play Super Bomberman 2, and that game is amazing. I, I love that game, uh, and I always play it on Super Nintendo. But anyway, just just kind of let you know, NEC just branched out, in, in, especially in America, and um, just didn't care. They were licensed. Because honestly, in America especially, uh, their, their, their consoles were garbage. I mean, the consoles themselves are good, but their marketing and their market share was garbage, so they didn't really care. So back to this, this is a Turbo Duo, and this is when uh, they combined uh, both the Core Graphics or PC Engine and the Super CD-ROM 2. Instead of being this bulky thing, they made it into this sleek thing, and it retailed for, I think, 299 bucks in 93, maybe? Somewhere around there, early 90s. Uh, and it came with just one controller, just like every other PC Engine slash Turbo Graphics system. It only has uh, one controller port, and if you wanted to play with more players, I did find this is a PC Engine uh, one, 
but or a uh, Japanese one. This is a uh, TurboTap or equivalent of a TurboTap. The American one is probably black, uh, but they're all compatible. The, all the controllers are compatible across systems. And you can see this one says Turbo Duo on it, and it says Turbo Graphics 16 even right there. And this one's just, you know, it's almost identical, just a different color. So there's that. And uh, the thing with this, it suffered from the same thing that all NEC, just bad capacitors. So I did a lot of work on this. I feel it's kind of fragile, so I don't like to move it around a lot. In fact, I almost didn't want to bring it downstairs, but you know, just, it was a couple of cables and I was pretty careful with it. So I feel like it's just put together with, uh, with paper mache and duct tape at this point. It's all kind of just barely hanging together, but um, we're gonna set this aside over here because there's no real need to mess with that anymore. Uh, this is the one we're caring about. And, oh, this one does also have a region mod switch in the back, so it's very similar to this. So it plays both Japanese and American games. So let me show you some of the games that I have. I might even go through all of them because it's my video and I'll do whatever I want. And if you want, you can stop now or fast forward. But I'm probably going to go through every one of these. Uh, first, the Japanese games because I don't have a whole lot of them. Um, this is a super CD-ROM game called uh, Macross. It's basically the Japanese version of Robotech, or Robotech is a bastardization of Macross. Uh, this is a shooter, and the super CD-ROM games, there's, there's a whole bunch of shooters, uh, really good ones too, that you don't need to know any Japanese to play. This is one of the better ones, uh, at least I think so. So th that's a pretty fun game, and again, it's just a CD. And, oh, Ramo and Half, that's another one. Of, that's probably my favorite anime of all time. Uh, kind of dating myself with that. Uh, I didn't really watch anime past the mid 90s, so you can't really blame me. I, I love that series. But uh, yeah, lots of games uh, came out for the Super CD ROM 2, lots of licensed stuff, all kinds of stuff. And here's a game that some of you might recognize, some of you might not Snatcher. So, Snatcher is a very, very expensive Sega CD game. In the United States, uh, Snatcher came out for the Sega CD only, and the sequel never came out here. Uh, but the, 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 the US version on the Sega CD used to go for a hundred bucks back in the early 2000s and we thought that was a ton, right? You could get maybe for a little 1100. Uh, and then they were jumping up to crazy amounts now. Uh, the last time I saw, I went to a Game Over video games here in Austin a couple of years ago and some guy was trading in a whole bunch of stuff to pick up a copy of Snatcher for 350, $350. Uh, which is ridiculous, and I, and I think it's even more now, which is just really stupid. But uh, this is the Japanese version of Snatcher for the Super CD-ROM, and of course, if you don't know Japanese, you pretty much are out of luck. Um, but anyway, that's I think you can pick this up for really cheap. And here is one of my favorite games, Super Bomberman 94, and this is a turbo chip game, or Hue Card. I should call them Hue Cards because they're Hue Cards in Japan. Turbo Chip is only an American name. Um, and they look like this. They're just tiny little, here it seems there's a hue card on the back. Uh, they're really thin little cartridges and they just fit right in here. I'm gonna plug this. Okay. Just go right in there, turn it on, it even locks it in place. That's it. So the Japanese and American ones look identical except that there's uh, pin switching so that you can't bring them over. I don't know why they would do that. I mean, I get it. From a business standpoint, you didn't want um, somebody who marketed, who who bought the rights for the American release to lose sales to Japanese imports. But they're so few and far between. I don't know. They don't really do that anymore. But uh, back back in the '90s, it was always everything's always region locked. So there was converters. You can actually buy a converter for your uh, uh, Turbo Graphics or Turbo Duo that will allow you to play Japanese games on your uh, American systems. And I'll just basically just reroute the, the pins, but they're super rare and very, very expensive. It's actually cheaper to just buy a PC engine to play your Japanese games than it is to buy a converter. So go figure, right? Just buy a whole new system, uh, unless you really want the convenience of having it all in one system. Or you can mod it, or have somebody mod it, like what I did. Uh, so anyway, Bomber, Bomberman 94. And then this is what I was talking about earlier. There's only a few of these. If you, I don't know if you can see that. It says arcade CD-ROM. So there's, uh, I don't have any Japanese ones, but this one, this is an American one, uh, JB Harold Murakov, which is like uh, uh, Sherlock Holmes consulting detective, but instead of 
video, really, really shitty video in 60, it had more like just still images, still digitized images. Um, really good voice acting, and it has Japanese and English, uh, I believe, uh, voices for it on this. But anyway, this is just a CD game. This is what I'm pointing out. Uh, this one required uh, that you just have a CD attachment, either one, in, the, in America. In Japan, I think there was three versions. In, in the United States, there was only two, I think. Uh, the Super CD-ROM was the, the last version. Um, but if you had a Super CD-ROM, uh, you can add an arcade card to it. Or if you had the original, you can add an arcade card pro to it. And you can play these games, which are um, arcade games. And literally, this is an arcade game. This is Fatal Fury 2, which is a Neo Geo game. Now, if you remember, the TurboGrafx PC Engine is an 8-bit CPU, and the Neo Geo was a powerhouse. It's still 16-bit, just kind of like the TurboGrafx-16 called itself 16-bit, but it was really 8-bit CPU with 16-bit graphics. The Neo Geo called itself, I think, 24-bit, but it was really just 16-bit. The Super Nintendo, Neo Geo, um, and Genesis were all technically 16-bit, but Neo Geo was just like the top of the line 16-bit. And uh, this actually brings it really, really close to the arcade quality uh, of the Neo Geo games. And you'll see back here, it says that you need either one of these cards to be in your system in order to play it. There is no system that came built in with the arcade, um, arcade system software on it with the memory. You had to buy an arcade card, uh, either the Pro if you're using the older CD-ROM system or the Duo if you're using the newer CD-ROM system. So, but anyway. Yeah, Fatal Fury on uh, Fatal Fury 2 on CD. Uh, there's a game called Sapphire that's a really cool shooter. You can find videos of it on YouTube. Uh, it is ridiculously expensive. I remember again a decade ago, it was like $300 for a copy of Sapphire. That's a Japanese game. It's just a shooter. And now it's like $800, $1,000, dollars for a copy of Sapphire. And it's a very rare game because it came uh, very late in the the. PC, the Super CD-ROMs, or Arcade CD-ROMs life, and uh, it, it's just one of the best games, and it's very rare and very good, so hence the high price. So those are all my Japanese games. Uh, we already went over Jap let me just go over real quick. These are the standard TurboGrafx CD games that you didn't need the Super CD-ROM, you don't need the Turbo Duo. You could have had the old TurboGrafx-16 and the regular CD-ROM attachment, and these will all work. So JV Harry Motor Club went over. Bastille, um, I know it's kind of fat, but I think it's just a single, yeah, it's just a single disc. It's just that I had a single, uh, sorry, it had a uh, really thick manual. Um, and it was put, put out by Working Designs. It, this is a strategy game, I think. Pretty sure. Yeah, it's like a hex-based strategy game. Um, it, I remember it being kind of talked about quite a bit back in the day, but honestly, it's too boring for me. I don't know. Strategy games are kind of, eh, Military Bandits is really cool. Uh, for the for the TurboGrafx 16, but other than that, they get too complicated, you know, and eh, I just get too that. Uh, Cosmic Fantasy 2 is a very hardcore anime-inspired RPG. Most people know it because of the cutscenes, and I think this is the one that has like a semi-nude cutscene where one of the girls is taking a shower and you can see her tits, but I don't think they had nipples because there was steam covering it or something like that. But I think that was this game. Yeah, but it, you can see the it's very brightly colored. Um, Working Designs put these both out, and they they're very good about their uh, production quality of their of their games. That's usually all color, um, and sometimes they have very. If you've ever played um, CDC games or PlayStation game, um, uh, what's it called Eternal Blue? Uh, oh my goodness, Eternal Blue is the second one. Lunar, so or Lunar. It's, I don't know who says it, Lunar. Somebody told me. I've heard people call it Lunar. But anyway, uh, Working Design puts those out. And they have really superb releases. So um, they're a pretty cool company. Defunct, but they were a cool company. Uh, it came from the desert. Just a, I don't even know what this is. I think this is, this might be one of the ones that has a lot of like full motion video. But uh, not real sure. Who cares? Magical Dinosaur Tour. I don't think I've ever put this in my machine. I have no idea. I just know it comes on CD because it says right there. Uh, maybe I'll put that in someday. Eh. Uh, Ease Book 1 and 2. This is a super popular one. This was one of the ones that sold people uh, on the CD attachment. This was the one that was like, wow, look at all you can what you can do with the CD attachment. It had Red Book Audio, which is, you know, orchestrated um, audio. It, they just, play, just streamed off the CD instead of playing uh, through the 
the musical chips inside the system. It just was playing on CD. So I had Redbook audio and it had cutscenes that weren't as elaborate as the current, you know, current day and all that stuff. But uh, for the time, it was mind blowing. You had full screen, uh, very brightly colored anime characters uh, during the cutscenes. Uh, they weren't animated all that well, but uh, it still was very impressive. The game itself is kind of, eh, I don't know. A lot of people like it. Uh, it has a really weird game mechanic where, you know, to fight you just kind of run into people and it just figures that out whether you won the battle or not or how much damage you're doing. I don't know. But uh, a lot of people seem to like East Book, book 1 and 2. It's so one of the most memorable, game, memorable games for the CD-ROM. And then Exiles, another work in design games. I don't know if this is... Okay, I wasn't sure if I actually had a CD. There's a couple of games I think I have the case for, but no CD. Um, I think this is just a side-scroller. I don't remember too much about it. Uh, honestly, I bought a whole bunch of these. Uh, I bought a stack of them for a hundred bucks. And there's some, now, I, I mean, back then nobody cared. But now, um, a lot of these, Amer especially the American stuff, is super expensive. Because again, like me, everybody else just ignored it. So they didn't make very many of them. And now people are, especially the collectors, are realizing what an awesome system it was. So uh, everybody's kind of going back and snatching these things up. And they're just crazy exorbitant prices for some of this stuff. So, I mean, I got a stack of CD games for 100 bucks, And I had some... I know it has some expensive games on it. So let me go over the Turbo Chip games. Uh, Blazing Lasers is probably the game I play the most. It's a Turbo Chip game. It's just a straight up top down vertical shooter. Um, I just really like it. I don't know what to say. It's it's part. It's um, uh, it's called I think Gunhead in Japan, um, and I think it's related to the Leste series. I think the people that make a Leste like Robo Leste and um, Super Leste, I think for the Super Nintendo. Uh, but it's a really good shooter. It's probably my favorite game for the Turbo Graphics. Uh, you should really check it out. If you have a Turbo Graphics, definitely get that. Uh, Bonk's Adventure, everybody probably knows. It's just the Mario. It's a side scroller. Um, it's okay. A lot of people like it. I don't think it's that special, but you know, whatever. Uh, Raiden is a shooter. It's an arcade shooter. Do I have that one? Yeah, it's a Turbo Chip game as well. And uh, it's very much like Blazing Lasers. Uh, this was an arcade release, but. Um, you know, I prefer Blazing Laser, I think it's more fun. And apparently I have two copies of Blazing Lasers. That's interesting. Are they really? Yep, I really do have two copies of Blazing Lasers. Which is fortunate because this one had a torn manual. So, and I think, honestly, I think this is like, you know, I think every one of these games is worth like 50 bucks minimum because they're just all rare. Uh, Splatterhouse, that's probably the one that people associate the most other than Bonk. Uh, and Bomberman. Okay, so after bon Bonk and Bomberman, this is the game that people associate the most with the Triple Graphics of 16. Um, it's a pretty fun side scroller. It uh, stars a guy named Rick who's totally Jason from Friday the 13th Part 3 with a hockey mask. And he just goes uh, left to right and uses a big stick and, and smashes ghouls and kicks them down. And it's a pretty rudimentary uh, gameplay, but there's something very satisfying about them. The graphics are pretty good for the time. Uh, if you if you have a TurboGrafx 16, you definitely should have this in your library. But um, you know, keep in mind that it's a really old game, and and you know, uh, just take it for what it's worth. But it's still very fun, very fun, recommended. R Type, another arcade shooter. I was looking for R Type for the NES. I don't think it came out for the NES, but it definitely came out for the uh, TurboGrafx because I have it. And R Type's a fantastic game. Uh, it's a side scroller shooter. And, I open each one of these up to make sure I actually have them. Uh, it's a side-scrolling shooter like uh, Gradius or Life, uh, Life Force is both actually, or Parodius, something like that. Um, and uh, yeah, it's fun. It's known for having this big kind of option in the front, which uh, that's what they call the Gradius. This big orb that you can shoot around and manipulate. Uh, it's a super fun game. I recommend that as well. Bonk's Revenge is basically the second game in the series. Um, I don't know, it's more Bonk, whatever. Uh, Aero Blaster is another vertical shooter, uh, just like Blazing Lasers. I don't remember too much about this one. I, I've heard some good things, but do I have it? Yes, I do. So far, so good, right? Um, I'll check it out. Uh, I, a lot of shooters. You can't have too many shooters. I love shooters. Speaking of shooters, I, when I was sorting these games, I found out I have an Air Zonk. I didn't even know I had Air Zonk. Air Zonk was one of the later releases. Um, it, it doesn't have the full case. Uh, I have the front manual and the cartridge, or 
the Hue card, but this game is really rare, I think. Uh, they released it both on CD, Super CD, and on chip. I'm not sure which one's worth more, but uh, I'm very curious to look look it up after I do this video because uh, this is one of the games that came out very late in the uh, life of the of the system. So it's too bad I don't have the back part of it. Um, this isn't just a CD thing, but the fact that I have it all is pretty amazing. I don't even, I have no idea where I got that. Uh, Ninja Spirit, uh, Ricky, if you're watching this, this he was the one telling me that he used to love playing this game. Um, into it, yes I do. Yeah, I have it. Um, again, it's in the wrong kind of case. But uh, I think this is just a shoot. Wait a no. Is this the one he was talking about? I think he was talking about Dragon something else. Never mind. Never mind, Ricky. I don't think you were talking about Ninja Spirit. What was it Dragon? Shoot, not Dragon Slayer. That's a CD ROM RPG. But anyway, forget that. Soldier Blade. I've heard a lot about this. I've been watching a lot of Trouble Graphics videos on YouTube. Uh, just kind of bring myself up to speed because, again, I've said this several times, but it's super true. I don't most Americans just skipped over it so we don't know a whole lot about this system so I've been trying to research it a little bit uh, and again this is another one where it just came actually this one has like the <laughs> the CD part the spindle where this it just shaved it off but uh, anyway soldier blade uh, that's a like a blazing lasers type of game and the military Madness. I mentioned this a little bit earlier this is actually really fun if you played um, what was it called Advance Wars it's kind of like Advance Wars it's pretty simple uh, but uh, really cool. It's detailed enough to keep your interest, but not so detailed that you're just buried in under uh, mounds and mounds of menus and, and sub like text. And it's actually uh, not that bad. Uh, I believe you're fighting for land on the moon, if I remember correctly. I think in Japan it's called Nectaris. And anyway, uh, it has cool stuff like if it's just like Advance Wars. If you're on higher ground, you have an advantage. There's tanks. There's infantry. All that cool stuff. Uh, it's a hex-based uh, uh, strategy game, so Military Mass is another one I recommend that you have if you have a Trevor F-16, if you're getting one. And then finally getting to the Super CD-ROM games. Um, so these are the ones I have. Lords of Thunder is one of the best-known games for it. It has a very, very, very cool soundtrack. Uh, it's like hard rock, like butt rock, really. Um, it's one of the best games, one of the last games released for the system. They actually released this game for the Sega CD, believe it or not. Um, and I think it's kind of rare. Uh, I've never played on the Sega CD, but the Sega CD and the Genesis itself doesn't have the amount of colors that the, the TurboGrafx-16, the Turbo Duo does. So it probably doesn't look as good, but this is an excellent, excellent game. You play like a knight and you have power-ups, uh, but it's essentially a, a vertical, no, horizontal shooter going left to right, uh, like Radius. So it's a really cool game. There's, there's a prequel to it I think I have down there. It's called Gate of Thunder. We'll get to that one. Uh, Forgotten Worlds, uh, this was a PC release, no, not PC, an arcade release, um, where I think it has spinner. I recall it having a spinner, and this one I think you just rotate with the buttons, um, but it's a pretty cool Capcom shooter from back in the day. Uh, it's pretty short, I mean, it is an arcade game, but it's pretty fun as well. Do I have it? Yes, I do. I know I have loads of Thunder. I didn't check that one because I actually just played it a couple days ago on my Turbo Duo. Uh, Cotton... If you notice, this one has a TTI logo because it was really super late in the game and TTI was the one marketing at this time. Cotton is a very expensive game. I think this game is like 300, 350 bucks. If I'm not, for sure over 200 bucks for just this game right here. This is one of the games I got in a stack of 10 uh, when I bought uh, the games from Guy. I met this guy at a Conan's Pizza in the early 2000s. He was having a, a party there or something and I met him there and I gave him 100 bucks. He gave me like a stack of like 15 of these things, one of which was this. Uh, this is a kind of a cute em up, which is a shoot em up with cutesy characters. You play as this witch, uh, I think her name is Cotton, Fantastic Night Dreams Cotton, Cotton, yeah, anyway, you play this cute little witch and the fairy are like the options and you just shoot stuff. It's really cute, really fun, uh, good music and a very sought after game. So if you find a Cotton, you should definitely buy it. If it's anything other than 50 bucks, you should definitely, even a hundred bucks, you should buy it. Uh, it's a pretty good game. I recommend that one. Uh, John Madden, Duo C Football. If you thought the Genesis and the Super Nintendo were the only ones that had John Madden Football, you were wrong. Plus, these guys had it on CD. Um, the game looks very similar to the 16-bit cousins on the Genesis and the Super Nintendo. I honestly don't remember 
ever playing this. Uh, it says multi multiplayer, two players, you'll need the turbo tap. Um, is it really two discs? No. So it's just one disc. And then the manual. Wow, it's pretty hefty. Is it in color? Of course not. Not in color, even back then. But they have all these stats. Let's see what that. I'm going to see the Dallas stats for what year is this? So it has Aikman and I guess Steve Verline because QB, QB2 is number seven. Um, pass rate 13, pass accuracy 14. Hmm. Yeah, Emmett Smith's here. So is Moose Johnston. So is, you know, early 90s. Um, has a whole bunch of stats. Just tons of stats. So that's why it's so thick. It's a single disc. And this one is uh, defensive plays, I guess. But uh, yeah, I'll try that out too. I've never tried it. Never been a big sports guy. Although I did like um, Genesis Madden back in the day. Here's the one I was talking about earlier, Gate of Thunder. Gate of Thunder is uh, another side-scrolling shooter. If you can't guess, there's a lot of shooters, and I love shooters uh, for the system, with, with really incredible music and great gameplay. Really freaking hard. So is Lords of Thunder, but this one's even harder. Um, and this is the, where Lords of Thunder, you play a guy that's like a, I don't know, a knight or something. Uh, this, you play a traditional ship, just, you know, spaceship. And there's another Lords of Thunder. I don't know how I have two of these. Um, this one's missing a little bit of the spine. But yeah, so it's another copy of Lord of Thunder, which I think I probably, what happened is I owned it, and then when I bought the stack of games, it probably had duplicates because of Lord of Thunder. I want to see if the other copy of Lord of Thunder has the full spine. It does, which is really cool. Uh, Splash Lake, I have no idea what the hell this is. I'm looking at the back, uh, this looks terrible. Looks like a puzzle game of some sort. Nah, I guess I have every CD. I didn't think I had every CD. I thought I was missing it, but no. I don't know. I know you probably can't see that, but it looks horrible. I don't think I've ever put this in the system either. So anyway, those are the games. Uh, oh, before I forget. Um, let me move this up to the side a little bit. It's an American stuff. Uh, this... This is the super graphics. I totally forgot it was there. I was so engrossed in these games. Uh, here are two, two of the five available games for the super graphics. Um, robot game, airplane game. I, you know, this is Airdynes. It's called Grand Zord or something. Something. If you look at it, they look kind of like half knight, half like Gundam or something. I don't know. And I think this is the game where you scroll to the left instead of to the right, or there's parts where you scroll to the left, which is sort of interesting. Um, these are actually cardboard. Uh, they both have the super graphics on the back picture of it. Um, they're cardboard. Oh, they're just sleeves. This is, uh, oh, it's Battle Ace. I thought I had all dines, uh, Battle Ace. And wow, it still has a little, um, foam part yeah the thing is like the super graphics games were so unpopular that a lot of the times you can find them really in condition um just because nobody ever bought them so wow super graphics suit card says in there um, i don't know i guess i'll try it maybe if i decide to open this up right um Ah, uh, get into the thing here. Uh, so the RA thir RU30, this is the Super Graphics. This is the original, I don't have one with me. This is the original PC Engine CD-ROM. Um, and because the Super Graphics didn't fit into it, the PC Engine could fit in there, you know, because it's so tiny. Um, but it needed an adapter, so you basically put this block in there with this thick cable that went to your, your back of your Super Graphics. It's, it's a mess, it's just a big mess. Um, and then this whole thing kind of closed in a suitcase. Ideally, you would have a PC Engine and then the original CD-ROM, and then you could put in the PC Engine, you'd put the System 3.0, or the Arcade, really, the Arcade Pro card in there, and you'd have everything in one little suitcase. Because um, it literally, this thing is, uh, has a top with a suitcase and a handle, so you can, you can take this around. But anyway, all this is is an adapter. That's all it is, adapter for the Super Graphics. So the Super Graphics, man, I don't know. If, if I open it up, it'll be in a separate video for an unboxing. Um, so I'll just show you the box real quick. So it's in it's in really good condition. Uh, my box isn't even like dented or I mean it's okay it's a little dented. But a lot of you see shelfware on these things where it's just the paint had rubbed off or whatever. But 
um, yeah, it's a really good condition. Now, these things didn't have seals, or they didn't have bottoms, I should say. They didn't have like carbon bar, it's just a styrofoam. You can see it just had some tape that was yellowed and was cut um, so that we could see the inside of it. So I'm gonna save this for another video, but what I will do is stick a couple games and hopefully this thing works, right? So I'm gonna pause this video, probably gonna switch to a wholly different uh, input. So I'm gonna try to grab the video directly and I'll probably use the webcam for uh, capturing my commentary. So we're gonna give it a shot, cross your fingers over there, although by the time I post this, I'll already know uh, that this thing works. All right, so I'll be back in a few seconds and we'll play some games. Okay, before we get to the gameplay video, I just want to see if this thing's gonna power on. Right now I have it hooked up to an AV splitter that goes to both the BVM and the capture card. And I just wanna see if this thing's gonna power on and give me both video and sound. The packaging wasn't super great. It was bubble wrapped, but kind of banged around a little bit in there, I'm pretty sure. So fingers crossed, I have Bomberman 94 in there. And let's flip this guy on. Something happened. Okay. Got an image. Got sound. Sounds great. I think. Yeah. Looks good. Alright, looks like the Hue card functionality is there. a lot of these games are going to be in English even though they are Japanese only with the exception of course of the um, role-playing games so this is Soldier Blade this is an American chip turbo chip game or Hue card game okay I'm just gonna leave it in the same position and see if it does anything nope it goes screw you so let me push in the region mod chip or let me region mod switch again and there it is so great the region mod works too all right cool so we know that the uh the region mod works and you can't have any chip games in there if you want to play the cd-rom games so i'm just gonna pick lords of thunder because it happens to be on the top. And let's pop this open. Put in Lords of Thunder. This is the American release. And power this sucker on. Okay, so that's normal. Oh, nice. PC Engine Super CD ROM 2 System version 3. I'm used to it saying the uh, Turbo Duo. So press run. There's no start button, it's just select and run. Just a moment. Okay, good, it's loading. Yeah, awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna switch this over to the, here we go. Oh, that's where it starts kicking in, really nice. Uh, I'm gonna switch it over to the gameplay video capture and I'll be right back. Okay, everybody, I am back. And I know it seems like through the magic of editing that I just completed that little clip where I did the Hue card testing and the Lords of Thunder CD test to make sure that the audio was all okay. Um, but it's actually been over two weeks since I did that clip. So what happened was, after I did that quick test, uh, I started thinking about how good the Lords of Thunder soundtrack really was. And the Gate of Thunder soundtrack was really good. And then that got me thinking about, well, you know, there must have been some bad CD games, and, and there certainly were. And then it hit me. What happened to Final Zone 2? I didn't have it in my stack of games that I was talking about. So I looked again, and sure enough, it was missing. So I went back upstairs, and I looked through a different part of my game collection, and I found Final Zone 2 and a handful of other chip and CD games that I had just stored in a different area for some reason. 
actually, maybe I kind of know why. Um, we'll get to that to, to that part in a bit. But I also found another piece of hardware, an important piece of hardware that I just completely forgot to talk about. Um, one that I actually own and, and is, is actually a beloved piece of hardware for me. Um, and that is this. This is a Turbo Express, um, which is essentially just a portable Turbo Graphics, and it plays full-sized, full versions of uh, Turbo Graphics cue card games or Turbo Chip games, as they're called in America. And that was another thing. Is like I, I couldn't find Devil's Crush, and the reason I couldn't find it is because it was still it was still in my Turbo Ex Turbo Express. Um, and this thing is is really really cool. Uh, it came with a color monitor or not monitor a color LCD screen and it uh, ran on batteries uh, in fact the worst thing about this is it ran on six batteries and it ate them up like nothing they would last a full set of or a new set of, of batteries alkaline batteries would last you about three hours which sounds terrible but if you think about it it's powering a full turbo graphics and a color LCD screen and at the time I mean engineering just wasn't very good and uh, it was just a power drain. But um, the cool part was that it uh, also had a TV tuner. So you can actually watch television over the air television, not cable, um, on this. And, and of course, it came with an um, AC adapter. So if you ran out of power from your batteries, which was often the case, um, you could still plug it in and, and, and use it as a semi, as a tethered portable. Uh, I don't remember if it has, yeah, I think it has. So it has this um, this expansion port for the TV tuner, but I was wondering if it had uh, a player two. I don't think it does. Um, and honestly, there's not because the Turbo Graphics itself and and all the NEC consoles are, are just one port systems. Um, there's not a whole lot of two player games. There's you know stuff like Bomberman, and there are games that have simultaneous. Uh, two-player co-op play, but they're not as common as they are for other systems. So it's not really that big a deal. That I, I really don't think it has a second uh, port for a controller, uh, for a, a player two controller. Um, it doesn't even. So it has a COM port. Honestly, don't know what that is. I don't know if that was like a link port that was never used. I've never heard of anything, at least in America, that used that COM port. Um, but it does have headphone jack, and then here's the power. Um, for the AC adapter, but it's still a really cool little system. They make mods for this now. There's there are people that uh, first thing that fails, like all the other NEC systems, and I've said this over and over, they'll have crappy capacitors, and they almost always leak and fail and cause the machines to stop working. Sometimes sound, sometimes just altogether just doesn't work. Um, so I haven't turned this on in a long time, and I'm honestly kind of afraid to put put batteries in here because the likelihood of it not turning on is very high. It's probably been seven or eight years since I've turned it on, so it almost certainly requires a capacitor uh, replacement, so I'm not even gonna bother. But anyway, the cool little piece of uh, history here, Turbo Express, they're kind of pricey, they were even pricey about 15 years ago when I bought this one. It cost me about 100 bucks, but I got it with Box. Box was a little beat up, but still pretty good. I think they're, they're probably closer to 200 now, or maybe more, honestly, I haven't checked in a while. But uh, it was really cool. First, uh, first company to actually produce a portable that played their home game systems um, just straight away. No, no portable version. It doesn't start up a portable version or anything like that. So anyway, Turbo Express, really cool. And, uh, and, and I talked about Devil's Crush. That was one of the games that was missing from my collection. And again, it was because it was, the Turbo Express. It was in the Turbo Express. So Devil's Crush um, is a pinball game, and I know that sounds really lame, but it's actually a really cool game. There's another game in the series called Alien Crush, and I think there are more after that, even for other systems. But all these Crush games are just video pinball, but because they're video game pinball, they can have all kinds of fantasy elements or, or things that wouldn't be possible in real pinball games. Uh, so it's actually pretty fun. It's multi-level, and it's one of my, honestly, it's one of my favorite games as far as chip games, so if you own a TurboGrafx-16 or any PC Engine type of, or any NEC machine, uh, you might want to consider getting this game. It's it's really fun. That or Alien Crush. Some people like Alien Crush better. I personally like Devil's Crush better, but you know it's just a matter of opinion. The Alien Crush one is uh, kind of Geiger-esque, based on the alien creature from the movie Alien. Um, but anyway, that's what this is. Uh, it's a good game. Check it out. Uh, then I found some other games. 
uh, I found Final Lap Twin. And this is a very unique game because it's a racing game, as it, you would guess, but it's also a, a role-playing game. And not a role-playing game as in a simulation game, but a role-playing game like Overworld, like getting randomly attacked. Actually, I don't know if you get randomly attacked. I think you can see your enemies. But, you know, having battles. But instead of doing battles with swords and magic and healing potions, you race. Um, and there's another game called World Court Tennis, I believe is the name of this, uh, of it, that has the same type of mechanic where it's a tennis game, but it's also a role-playing game in the same manner where you have an over overworld, but instead of uh, swords and magic and all that stuff, you, you fight it out using your tennis racket. You actually play a game of tennis. Um, I remember that World Court, Te World Court Tennis. I don't, I don't have it, but I played it at a friend's house. I remember it playing kind of wonky. Um, but anyway, Final Lap Twin is a really cool game. The racing's pretty fun and has that whole other element of role playing, which is really unique, kind of fun. Um, Power Golf. This game is just a shitty golf game. Just there's no other way to put it. It's just a bad golf game. Don't don't bother with it. Uh, Keith Cur Keith Courage and Alpha Zones. Um, this game was the original packing game for the Triple Graphics 16. Why? I don't know. It's it's not a very good game. It's an okay game. It's a mediocre game. It's not a game that you're going to play at your friend's house and then go home and clamor for your own Turbografx 16 for Christmas. Um, it's okay. There's it's like a two phased game. There's like a it's almost like two different games in one. Um, the the alternate reality or the alternate when you when you teleport or when you, whatever you transform and become um, the other. I guess when you go to Alpha Zone, maybe that's it. It's actually a pretty decent game, but it's just kind of boring. Um, it's a very common game, and in fact, it's so common I have two copies in this one case. Um, if you own a TurboGraph 16, it's likely that you got this as a pack in with it for free. Um, it's pretty common. You can buy it for really cheap, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't bother. And here's the game I was talking about before. This is the game that made me realize that I was missing games from the stack that I was showing you all. Uh, Final Zone 2, look at this Look at this artwork. I'm not sure if you can see it. I know the lighting's bad. I'm reliant on the, the, the screen, uh, and the screen's kind of dark right now to eliminate me from the front. But Final Zone 2, if you can see that, if not, Google it. It, it is it's worth checking out. It is terrible. Um, it's terrible from, I mean, the, the artwork is terrible. The, the voice work is absolutely terrible. But the game is actually not too bad. It's actually decent. It's a, it's kind of like an Akari Warriors type of game. Um, pretty straightforward action game. But it, <laughs> I'm, I'm probably going to end up putting this on for you to see, just so you can witness how bad it is. Uh, so anyway, Files on 2. I'm going to set this aside. We will play this. Oh, I forgot a couple of chip games here because they, they weren't in cases. Uh, Double Dungeons. Double Dungeon. Yeah, Double Dungeons. I think this is a gauntlet type of game, maybe, or maybe like a Zelda type of game. Uh, I haven't played it in forever. And the other one is Take It to the Hoop, which I never have played, I don't believe. But just from the sound of it, it's probably an awful basketball game. Maybe I'll pop that in. Maybe I won't. But um, anyway, just wanted to mention I had these other two chip games. Uh, and this is kind of a uh, an interesting thing. I only have the case for it. I wish I had the card inside because it's actually quite valuable. This is a Super System uh, 3.0 card case. There's no card inside. Let me show you. I wish there were. Um, but what it looks like, it looks like one of these little hue cards, just a little thicker and has additional memory that allows you to play Super CD-ROM games if you own the original TurboGrafx CD-ROM attachment. That one is the one that kind of looks like the old Discman. It's kind of square and boxy. And if you had that, you could play the CD-ROM games, the first generation, the American first generation, um, which is actually equivalent to version 2 in Japan. Um, and then when they released the Super CD-ROM, which came over, you can actually buy a Super CD-ROM attachment, the one I bought uh, in America. You can only play Super CD-ROM games if you had a Turbo Duo, which is the combination of TurboGrafx-16 and Super CD-ROM all together with the, th the System 3.0 card with extra memory built into it, or if you had the original TurboGrafx-16 and the, the CD original CD attachment, you could buy this card, which is a Super System card 3.0, to convert it into what essentially became a Turbo Duo. Um, 
because you need this to play Super CD-ROM games, and they didn't sell a whole bunch of them, they are pretty expensive. You can buy the Japanese ones, but they won't fit in your American Triple Graphics unless you have a converter. And by that point, I mean, it just the converters are expensive, and you know you might as well just forget about it. You might as well just get a Turbo Duo, to be honest. Um, so anyway, that's what this is, or, or at least the case represents. And then I have a couple of uh, Super CD-ROM games that I, I just uh, missed. Um, this one is Theron's Quest, Dungeon Master. This is a dungeon crawler. I believe it's available on other systems. Um, like this, some Sega, I can't remember if it's on the, the Saturn or the Sega CD, but it's definitely on other systems. And it's not very interesting. Um, it's like a first person dungeon crawler. I, I watched a video of it. I, I haven't played it, but it looks pretty boring. I honestly would skip it. Uh, and then this one, so all the mostly all the games that I skipped, other than than the Devil's Crush game, and maybe the, the chip games for um, what was it? Uh, Final Lap Twin. That was okay. Was it the chip game I had? I guess that was it. Taking it to the hoop. I don't, oh, Power Golf's terrible. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> most of those games that I had missed are pretty awful. So I'm thinking that I put them off to the side because they were awful. And uh, the exception is this game. This is Gate of Thunder. And when you bought the Turbo Duo back in the day, in 92, I think it was, uh, it came with this 3-in-1 uh, CD, which, oops, I have it in the machine. Let me take it out and show it to you. So it's testing it too. So it came, this case is a little broken, so forget it, I'll just take it off. So it came with um, Gate of Thunder, Bonk 1, and Bonk 2, uh, which is Bonk's Revenge. And... It actually has, it's called the 3 in 1 disc, but it actually has a fourth hidden game on there. If you push up, right, down, and left, or just a circle starting from the top, and hit the play, the button 2, you actually unlock a full version of the original Bomberman for the TurboGrafx-16. Turbo so it's actually a 4 in 1 disc. And uh, I had a lot of fun with Bomberman. It's the original Bomberman. I prefer Bomberman 94. But it's still pretty fun if you have a turbo tap. Definitely check that out. Um, but the highlight of this disc is definitely Gate of Thunder. So Gate of Thunder is a shooter. I will play this. I'll show this to you. Gate of Thunder is a shooter um, made by the same people that made Lords of Thunder. It was, I think, made the year before. Um, it has really good music, really good gameplay, pretty good graphics. Um, so it's definitely one you want to check out. I think this disc is kind of pricey because I don't know that there's any other way to play Lord of uh, Gate of Thunder without this 3-in-1 disc in America unless you import it. And what I noticed was, when I've taken this out, um, it actually has all three booklets on the same, in the same case. So that was kind of cool. They just basically slapped three booklets in here, put all the games on one disc, and uh, threw it in the uh, package as a pack-in. So uh, let me, in fact, let me throw this in, oops, let me throw this in first. So we'll finally get some gameplay here. I know you've been sitting here watching this press or push run button thing. So let's get this going. Um, this particular disc, because it has multiple games on it, will actually present you with Bonk's going to come out. And I'll, I'll let it play out. And he says some stupid things. This part right here with the scaling and rotation, I'm not sure if that's part of the CD-ROM attachment, if the PC Engine can do that, or if that's just a video from the disc. Here's your star, Bonk. Una bonk. Daba duba. Una muga. So I think me and we had the same <coughs> caveman word, but anyway. So there's more scaling and rotation that I didn't know it did, so again, it could have been just video. But here are the games. Um, again, if I push up, right, down, and left, I can just do that now. And two, it will actually start a fourth game. It should called Bomberman. There it is. So, and this is just the original Bomberman. And you can see it supports up to five players, which is really cool. Um, it's if you've ever played Bomberman, it's Bomberman. It's a. Uh, it's got a. One, the one player is a story mode, and I don't know. I'm skipping the story, but you just fight against these creatures. Um, if you've never played Bomberman, 
It's super fun, but you really have to play it multiplayer. Uh, this is a game where your little Bomberman guy, um, I'm the one in white, um, you can fight up to uh, four other Bombermen, and you, you essentially just run around this uh, maze trying to blow each other up and keep yourself from getting blown up. You, you can blow yourself up, um, and because you can't, without upgrades, you can't um, move the bombs, you can get trapped. Oh shit, I didn't want to do that. Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> okay. Anyway, let me uh, restart it and get Gate of Thunder going. The load times aren't too bad. I I really, considering that the CD technology was pretty new back then, um, and how awful the Sega CD uh, was for load times, especially like, I remember playing Willie Beamish on my friend's Sega CD. Oh my god, that was almost unplayable. It was so slow. And uh, the Neo Geo CD ROM, the initial one, was also super slow. So this may seem like it's taking a while, but it's actually not too bad. I'm going to skip this bong thing as soon as it comes up, just to get to the menu. And of course, as soon as I start praising it for being quick. Okay, so that came up quickly. I'm just going to start getting thunder. It's kind of cool. He introduces the game, walks off, and then it just goes right to the Gate of Thunder game. Right to the Gate of Thunder game. Now. Now. Okay. Now? I see the busy light on. You're accessing it. Let's go. I jinxed it. I, I, I really jinxed it. It was actually loading pretty quickly before. It's getting lazy. It's old. Okay, here we go. So, Get a Thunder again is a shooter. It's a side scrolling horizontal shooter like uh, Gradius. Um, let's watch a little of this intro. I'm not sure if it has any animation in it. I don't think it does. It might have some rudimentary yeah, AI like this. I mean, this is stuff you'll see on a cartridge game. Except for the music, right? So all this music is Red Book Audio, meaning it's just being streamed right from the CD. That was a big drawing point for the system. Oh, no. Tom Jimmy. Eagle. Okay. So again, this, this intro isn't too impressive. It's not like it's full motion video or anything. And I really don't think we care too much. Um, you're shooting stuff. That's the story. Shoot the stuff that's on the screen. Pick up the power-ups. Don't get hit. That's, that's all you need to know. And I've let it run too long. I've really jinxed it. It, it was loading up pretty quickly before. Any second now. There we go. <clears throat> Alright, so um, I don't think configuration has anything, yeah, nothing too fancy. Let's just start. So a lot of people think this game is better than uh, Lords of Thunder. I disagree. I think that Lords of Thunder is the better game. Lords of Thunder came out afterwards, and I, I just think it's more fun. Uh, this game is a traditional, you get hit once, you die, um, and you get X number of ships. And Lords of Thunder is, uh, you get one guy, but he has health. And you can upgrade his health, uh, and power-ups and stuff like that. There's a shop where you can buy things. Yeah, if you like traditional shooters, these options, you actually get both at the same time. It's not like a Gradius or Parodius where you get them one at a time. Or Life Force. There you go. You get them both at the same time, and you can change them. If you double tap, they will shoot the opposite direction. If you put it on Turbo, and they just keep, that's Turbo 1, and that's Turbo 2, which doesn't seem to do anything because it's just turned all the time. Uh, I'm not paying attention. You also can change weapons. Right now I only have two. There's a third weapon. Okay, so that gives me options. So the laser one let, lets me head oh shit. I'm not paying attention. What's my third weapon? There's a third weapon that's basically more powerful but slower. That I kind of prefer. This is the default. 
all for it. I normally don't die this much, uh, this early. I need some power-ups is what I need. You can change the speed, you can see in the upper right-hand corner, I'm hitting the select button. And, oh, that's the shield, right? And you can select the speed at which you move. The, the graphics really aren't that bad. Um, they're kind of good, actually. Uh, this, again, the, the PC Engine TurboGrafx-16 Turbo Duo, I'll have an 8-bit CPU and a 16-bit graphics processor. Even the Super Graphics has an 8-bit CPU, it just has an additional 16-bit graphics processor. Uh, so I think the graphics are more 16-bit than 8-bit, personally. I don't think that Nintendo can do anything close to this. Um, there's much more color, higher resolution, and uh, just, it just looks better. Um, I don't get a whole lot of slowdown. I mean, for being an 8-bit CPU, it doesn't slow down a lot. There's supposed to be like a super bomber. I don't know how to get it. I need the such a beat sequence. need that power up. There we go. I don't know the other. I never got that third weapon. I'm going to try to beat the first level at least. I gave up on quite a few ships at the beginning. I might not do that, but we'll see. We need the power up. I don't know much more power up. Alright, this is the boss, and it's loading it up. I'm forward, dude. Okay. So it's probably not going to shoot straight down the middle, right? Only hit it when it's open. And there we go. We have free D too. Cool. I just want to get that third weapon and then I'll probably stop playing this game so we can play something else. But that's a power up thing. Where is this other weapon? So I guess there is scaling on this, because there's scaling in it. Scaling in means uh, when you take a sprite and you shrink it or grow it. Um, instead of drawing like 10 sprites to get it to look like it's getting from the background uh, to the foreground, you just give it one sprite and the machine automatically calculates it. It scales it to different sizes depending on how far it's supposed to be from the screen. So the Super Nintendo did this um, with Mode 7. So mode 7 is um, what is being used heavily when you play games like uh, Mario Kart. So you, the, the, the whole track itself is basically a background that's being scaled and rotated. So rotated, just, just like it sounds, it, it rotates the, the sprites um, without having multiple sprites. It just calculates uh, and rotates it. There's a certain effect that you can tell when it's doing that. Shit. Oh, here, here's the other one. At some point I picked it up and didn't realize it. So I'm holding down the button, but those options are still like turning around randomly. So I don't know if it's just like a faulty controller or what. See, it just turned around. I didn't let go. You're only supposed to turn around when you let go and push it again. Uh, is that going to hurt me? Yes, because it's making noise. Like In case you're wondering, games like the uh, like Star Fox that have polygons, that's not mode seven. That's not scaling rotation. That's just straight up poly. That's just sort of polygons. And that was a super effect chip. That wasn't uh, the, the Super Nintendo itself wasn't capable of doing that on its own. Um, and it's stuff like Donkey Kong Country didn't require any kind of special chip, which was pretty amazing for the time. Um, it just basically they just pre-rendered the sprites and drew them up regular sprites. A bit of trivia about that is when uh, the president of Nintendo of America saw Donkey Kong Country, he thought it was a Nintendo 64 game. So when he found out it was a Super Nintendo game, he was ecstatic. Anyway, the point is, I'm getting off the track, uh, off the subject of 
turbo gun, or it's PC engine. The point is, this game looks pretty good. There's no 8-bit game that's going to look even close to this. And if you've noticed, uh, there's very little to almost no slowdown, considering all the sprites are on the screen and how many colors are on the screen. Um, it looks pretty good. I have the volume turned down quite a bit because earlier I had it louder when I was recording and I just couldn't even hear me talk um, so loud, but it has a really good soundtrack. Uh, I need that. You know, it's only supposed to play through the first level. Uh, this is actually pretty far. So let me see how far I can get. How many ships are there? Two ships left. I honestly played more Lords of Thunder, so it's like I'm almost playing this for the first time, but that's bad. Uh, so when you have a full uh, weapon, then when you pick up the upgrade, it just it becomes like a smart bomb and destroys everything on the screen. Here's the other boss. Let's do this. Oh, that was like a terrible idea. Not that. Oh, I don't have shields anymore. Anything to it? I can't tell if I'm hurting it. I feel like I'm not. Okay, it's changing colors now. Finally, oh my god, I got it. Ah! Saw that. Oh man, there's no way. I'm not gonna beat it now. I'm giving up my powers. Shit. Come on, dude, die! Go. Fuck! Ah, oh, I was so close. Okay, so that's a sign of a good game that you just kind of want to keep playing it, right? Um, I wonder if it keeps your initials in memory or not. We'll try. It. See if it's there next time. Nin? Is that like Nintendo? Anyway, that was L not Lords of Thunder. That was Gate of Thunder. So just to quickly compare that, I'm going to show you. A Lords of Thunder. I know I put it in just briefly when I was testing it, but and it's another shooter. I won't play it as long. But you tell me after you watch this if you think Gate of Thunder is better. I, I don't personally think so. So again, here's Lords of Thunder. Same company. Created it. Same guy. Same developers. <clears throat> I think the soundtrack is even more rocking just from right from the beginning. And uh, I think the gameplay is pretty fun too. And again, instead of uh, instead of controlling a spaceship, you control like a knight, or I don't know, a flying knight. I don't know what he is. He's wearing he's wearing um, armor and he has a sword along with his gun. So looks like a knight to me. <clears throat> Here is this is kind of a cool cover. Lords of Thunder. So you can tell the music is kind of rocking here. <clears throat> I'm gonna turn it up a little bit just for this game. I really like the music. You hear less of me and more of this game here. Let's listen to that. Bass kicking in. Oh man, when I first got this game, I was just blown away by the music. I just, gotta, I just wanna let it play this awesome butt rock from the early 90s. So I could just sit here and just listen to the music, but this is that. Alright, anyway, let's get to it. Um So you can play any of these different zones right from the get-go. The middle part I, I suppose, I've never finished it, is after you've completed all of these. Um I'm picking Bosque for one reason. My cousin, if you're watching this, his name is Mark Del Bosque, and it's Spanish. Bosque is like forest, so Del Bosque means from the forest. Uh, I'm gonna pick that just because. I think it's funny. And I'm also just gonna, because um, it matches the color, I'm not sure if you're supposed to choose the opposite, where if you're in Fire World, 
you're supposed to choose the water or um, weapon or you know if you're supposed to use the fire armor but I'm gonna choose the earth armor just because I, I like it but they each have different properties so this part's pretty cool you start off with uh, 300 credits and you can buy stuff like so at the upper right you see um, there's a life bar and then you can also purchase upgrades for your weapons and such uh, bombs are like smart bombs so this is level two do I want to buy I think I'm just gonna buy yeah I'm gonna buy more life and then I just I guess I'll just save that hundred nothing else costs a hundred does it three hundred six hundred oh that's my extra bomb okay cool I hope I don't press the bomb button first thing Jeez, I hope it's not two, because that's what I'm going to shoot with. One better be bomb, otherwise I'm going to waste that bomb I just bought. <coughs> okay, cool. So you start out pretty weak. And uh, that is a power upgrade. And these rubies give you money so you can buy stuff from that pretty lady at the shop. So I really like this weapon, this, this earth armor, because it drops those huge bombs. And it's good against uh, airborne uh, enemies too. Let me just drop it above them. That way you don't have to hover. Oh shit. That way you don't have to hover so close to the ground. Shit. So remember, you have one dude, but multi you know, multiple bars of health. And it's kind of like Metal Slug, where if you're too close, he uses his sword, see? Um, otherwise, he shoots. And I want to get a lot of these, those, those like, star-looking uh, objects, because they upgrade your weapon. And again, the gems are, um, they're just, that, that was a weapon upgrade. See how, see, how much, see how useful this is here? Oh shit. I didn't mean to do that. That was just a mid box. So that got me health. Okay, now shoots up and down. So I really oh shit. And this music is just I know it's kinda cheesy, but it's cheesy in like the best way. Getting hit, I mean, yeah, you lose health, but losing your upgrades is, like, really, really bad. Your sword is very powerful, but you have to be really close to use it, and it's automatic. I don't think you can kill that thing. So I have to avoid it. Fuck. Same with that thing. So, what do you guys think so far? Do you like Words of Thunder or Gate of Thunder? Both are good games. I don't blame you for liking either one. Ah, oh, shit. I think I appeared from the background. I assume. See, now I don't have my up. My, uh oh, shit. This is bad. This is very bad. Fuck it. I, I don't want to die here. Need an upgrade. I need my, my up bombs. Come on. God damn it. This is oh uh, great. I'm at the boss. I don't have a good amount of upgrades. I don't even have any bombs left. Might not make it out of this. I got less than half of my life. Shitty weapons. And no bombs. Oh, fuck. God damn it. <laughs> I don't think you can continue from there either. That was a very poor showing. Continue from there. If I can continue from, there. better not start from the beginning. Just to show you something different, let me try the uh, let's try the wind armor. And, and let me let me just level it up from the beginning. Oh, I, I can't make money. Well, that's cool. Oh, what's level max? Okay. 
Maybe I can do something with this, even if I start from the beginning. I probably chose bad armor for this level. Oh, okay. Uh, so it does start you right at the boss. I'm already getting my ass kicked. Gotta start a higher level. Oh, it runs on the ground. I never knew that. Yeah, that's cool. Dude, to die. Okay, I made it. All it took me was like a very powered up dude and lots of extra health. No big deal. Plus, I don't really like that weapon. Oh, like an elado. Maybe these are in Spanish. So, cielo means clouds or sky. It actually means sky or heaven. Um, descent, I don't know. Azul, I don't know. That's not Spanish. Yamarada? I don't know. I mean, you can tell it's red by a volcano, right? Helado. In Spanish, that means like, uh, it could be either ice cream or chilled or frozen. It means cold. So I'm going to choose that. And then I'm going to choose the opposite. I'm going to choose fire. And I have a little bit of money. Get all it powered up and buy some help. See how this goes. So I'm not, in case you're wondering, I'm not playing every single game. Um, I'm just playing this because it's one of the uh, premier games, and I kind of want to just to see a contrast to uh, Lords of the Oh, uh, game. So you've seen three of the four elemental uh, armors now. Oh, Actually, I don't even play this level. I usually play the, the forest level, fire level, wind level. I don't even choose this one. Dude, you have a lot of hit points. And one more hit should kill me. Okay, one more hit you for sure. Uh, so this game doesn't have a um, doesn't have a speed select um, like Gate of Thunder does. Or at least like it didn't seem to work for me. Maybe it, I didn't see it. Anyway, that's Lords of Thunder. I love this music. All right. So as a stark contrast to that, we're going to do Final Zone 2. Now to be fair, this is an older game, and uh, while these last two games were Super CD-ROM 2 games, um, this one's just a regular TurboGrafx CD-ROM game. So we will put that in there, give this a shot, and we're mostly watching the, the anime style intro on this, <clears throat> because it's awful. So I'm just going to put this on, and I'm not going to skip it, because that's the whole point. As soon as it gets to the game, I'll play a little bit and, and probably quit out. Maybe I'll try a couple more games. I don't want this video to be like a four-hour. I mean, if I played every single one of these games, um, it would just take forever. Renovation. That takes me back. They made some good Genesis games, actually. All right, so I'm just going to let this go. Enjoy Final Zone 2 opening uh, animated intro. <coughs> I swear they just got, like, guys from the office and just said, hey, speak this line into a recorder.
Our mission is to put down the rebel army which has captured the scientific weapon wall Cure. In five minutes, we will be passing over our dropping point. Get ready for descent. This was considered very fancy back in the day. Cop, call off your mission. Bowie, the Zods! Hanson? What happened? A high voltage energy wave is approaching us! <laughs> this is uh, reminiscent of Speed Racer, which is kind of endearing. And this animation is, <clears throat> if you notice, the box is really small. Uh, Sega CD did the same thing. But the nice thing is that this had a lot more color than the Sega CD. CD's, Sega CD was limited to, I think, 64 colors on the screen at once. And if you're trying to sell it as a full motion video system, um, that's, not too good. <clears throat> that's not good at all. This one has, I don't know, what, 512 or 256? It's considerably more colors. So here you see some of the mature content. You see severed limbs and dead people, which you would never see in Nintendo games. <coughs> the best line, by the way, is coming up still. There's a couple of really bad lines coming up. And they they burned into my brain. Are those just torsos or full humans? <clears throat> oh, okay. <laughs> I guess I have to actually start the game in order for you to see the good, good bad parts. I mean, those are bad, but there's it gets worse. There we go. There we go. Uh, take care of Momoko. Colonel, don't dally. Go. Verda! What makes it sound so odd is like the recording is so clear. <laughs> And the writing and the delivery, it's all bad. Uh, That's right, he where said. Where am I? Oh. So, though, if you're watching this shit back in the 90s, you're flipping out right now. So, only six of us survived. Oh, oh. That is one of the things I'll never forget. Just, Here come the rebel army soldiers. Just part two. There's no damage on the weapons. Let me show them some fancy action now. Fancy action now. Oh. Oh. Alright, let's show them some fancy action now. We're gonna take Bowie. Once you see the game, it's actually not that bad. It's like Iconic Warriors, see? Not bad. It's got cool Red Book uh, uh, audio music. So you can't shoot and move at the same time. So if you put it on uh, turbo, you can kind of a little bit. This is turbo two. I don't know. If, I don't know if there's any tanks you can get into like in Fire Wars. Oh shit, I'm out of I'm out of bullets. I 
do you still hold the button down? I need more bullets. I have 18 bullets. Oh shit, oh shit. Bullets? I think my buttons are messed up. I don't know what that pound or not pound, that bang fourteen means. Oh, shit. Why would I ever use the bazooka? Everything dies in one shot anyway. Start it goes to Bazooka, but it just pauses. Seems kind of tedious. I think I'm missing something. Shit. Yeah, this button is definitely wonky. Because I'm holding it down, and then, like, sometimes it'll let me move. Because it's treating it as a release. I guess the H is health. I don't know. That's what I'm thinking. Oh, there it is. Death. Anyway, final zone two. Do I get a death scene or something? No, that's it. Nah, I don't want to play this anymore. I'm going to try, because I said I was going to... Taking it to the hoop. I've never played it. It cannot be good. Here, let me switch the uh, <clears throat> switch the region mod to American. Oh yeah! Maybe I was wrong. Oh demo. Uh, let's do exhibition. So my spurs are nowhere to be found. In fact, none of the Obviously not licensed. What's high ad? Oh, Chica Chicago. I didn't see this. The CCO. I thought. The, okay. It looks fuzzy. Okay. I was, what the hell is high agriculture? Okay, it's Chicago. My bad. Seattle. Uh, L A. Honolulu. Hey, good for you. You got an NBA or a basketball life better. Dallas, Miami, New York, Boston. What the heck? Let's choose Honolulu. I'm from Texas, but <clears throat> since I'm probably gonna lose, I'm gonna choose the team I hate the least. We'll go with Seattle because they don't exist anymore. Oh, nice. This guy's like a punk, straight up. He's got spiky hair and earrings. Look, I'm gonna be honest. There's too many white dudes on my team for me to win. How do I? You know what, fuck it, let's just go. Uh, this is actually a lot more... A lot more advanced than a thousand. I'm a man to man, huh? Oh! Um, this actually looks kind of cool. Um, that is not... Oh shoot, I tried to traditional hold it down and then let it go. I did it twice? Where am I? Okay. They all look pissed. What happened? Oh, I got fouled? How is it a shooting foul? Oh my goodness. Come on, he's a white dude. Why is he going so fast? That's gotta be good. I like the ABA ball too. I have to admit, this is more fun than I thought it was going to be. Looks better too. The uh, this is why you should never go by the cover. Dude, can you dunk? Oh God! 
I love how happy that ref is and how fat he is. Could that be a fat ref in the NBA? So many blonde dudes. Where are we, Sweden? Why are there so many blonde dudes? Okay, so it's, it is double tap. Tap once to jump, tap again to shoot. I do not... There's there's never been so many blonde dudes on the court at once ever. Ever in the history of basketball. Come on. I want to see a dunk, even if it's by the computer. Dude, steal it. No, no, stay away, stay away. That's it. Shoot! I wonder if it's like a double dribble type. Ooh. Oh, come on, baby. Actually, I held the button down and it just, it just shot on its own. How do you fucking steal? I was right on that guy. He <laughs> didn't shoot. Oh, that was my guy. That is the happiest fat. That almost looks like Mario as a referee there. Oh, the black dude. Oh, shit! That was pretty cool, actually. This game's not bad. I take it back. Oh, my goodness. That wasn't even me. That was a computer traveling. Come on, dude. Yeah, yeah, baby! Get it in there! Right to the hole. I wish I could steal. Oh, you're all alone, man. Ah! Oh! Is there always a defender there? <laughs> Slash mad. Son of a gun. Come on, dude. Stop it. No, no, no. Oh. You can't stop him. I want to hit a three. Okay, why, dude? Hit a three. Ah! Uh, that was terrible. Spot up three point shooter. Negative. Nobody has made a three in this game. <laughs> Got it! Come on, baby! Jeez, they don't even look close! Fuck it. Guess so. What?! Oh my god. It didn't even go all the way to the other side of the, the meter. Oh my goodness. I swear, this button 2 is faulty. Because I hit it last time and it called the traveling because it didn't register it. I should take it apart and clean it out. God, like jump shots are impossible. Three point shot for the corner. Oh, oh okay. I was pushed. Holy crap. Oh, my. I hit the. I hit the. It's not registering. This button sucks. Oh, okay. That was my fault. <laughs> that was me. Get that rebound. Come on, dude. Holy cow, they can hit jump shots. Oh, come on. Just throwing it away. What's the timer on this? Really? It's like full 12 minute quarters? You're slow as shit. Oh my god. This button, I so I I held it down and it just released it. What? I'm not doing that. 
Unless I get just a bad shot, I just I can't shoot from that range. Jesus Christ. Get yourself a dunk! Ah! Oh! I'm having more fun than I should be in this game. This is one of those games that's also very common. Oh, look at that. Come on, dude. Please. At least shoot it! Somebody shoot a jump shot at Oh my god, I'm already over him and nothing. Dude! I can't do anything? Was that automatic? I don't remember hitting any buttons. <clears throat> Alright, All right, I think I've had enough of this game. It's pretty fun. I don't have to look into this button now. I take it back. Taking it to the hoop is, um, is kind of fun. Um, I want to try one more. I'll do one more before I end this video. Um, let's do a CD game. What we got? I feel like I just have a bunch of shooters, which is true. You know what I wish I had? I wish I had Fighting Street, which is Street Fighter One. Okay, I don't. I don't know what the hell this is. Um, I played a an Adam's Family game for the Super Nintendo by Ocean, that was pretty decent. I don't think this has anything to do with it. I don't know anything about this game. So let's experience Adam's Family for the TurboGrafx CD together. And it's not a Super CD-ROM 2 game, it's just a regular CD game here. So I, I, I don't even know what to expect. Other stuff. Oh, Splatterhouse. I have an EverDrive for the uh, TurboGrafx slash PC Engine. It, as expected, has the uh, Adams Family theme song. Um, anyway, when I do that, I'll play Splatterhouse for sure because that is a and Devil's Crush. Oh, this is based off yeah. the movie. Not easy being you, Tully Alfred. But that's okay. Could have been worse. Should have guessed. I should have looked at it closer. Adam. It's definitely the uh, Ray Old Julia. Why couldn't you be more like your brother? Have you ever expect to make a living slaving over those extravagant weirdos, the Adams family? Hey, what about my goals? Oh, what's the use? Here I am again, so, just like Clockwork. They just look it the seems like they just ripped this audio from the movie or I mean, why should I have to demand myself they're, each they're and every act time it out again on his property? Tully, my boy, you seem a bit stressed these if days. If they did their own production of this, it doesn't my sound bad. Family is the cause for your duress. But I have an idea which I think you might like. If you're able to successfully What's this find guy's name on Cheers? Boss, you she make Carla's as much money as The you one wish. that like picked up chicks there like no problem one, with like a stare. The family yeah, and this big I shall all be on bimbo wife patiently to How was his name? Well, let's just say to Carla make your task a bit more Scapetti, difficult than you might have originally imagined. I can't his name. Hmm. I mean how hard could it be to find that? Is this just going to be a way? still? And what could they possibly do to me that they haven't tried before? By George, I mean by Gomez, I'll do it. Okay, now I'm convinced that it's just a re-recording, that it's not audio from the movie. Tortelli. That is his name. What's his Nick, Nick Tortelli? Tully, my good man, how about playing a round of golf? Uh, sorry, Gomez. Yes. Oh, was that supposed I'm to be Gomez? Right now. Definitely a re-recording. Okay, sweet. You guys remember this part of the movie? Where you shot, like, sparkly shit out of a... <laughs> you dressed like a, a fat Captain Kirk carrying a briefcase, shooting sparkles out of a umbrella with two frames. Oh, the thing. The thing. Thing. Oh, okay. So he's good. Um, I guess I move forward. Yeah, that's super convincing crickets, though. God, I'd be 
be so mad if I bought this. Like, oh, you can fall in. Great. Oh, you can't. What? That is the most animation I've seen the whole game, is me dying to a shark. Okay, that's instant death. I, I can't do that on purpose. That looks like the alien from Without Warning. A terrible sci-fi flick made by the guy who directed um, Joysticks. So, I'm not sure... Oh, shit. If you can't fall into certain parts, or if I have health that ran out, or what. I'm just going to try not to fall at all. Shit. Oh, bounce me into it. Anything. Show me something, anything at all. Again, with Fat Captain Kirk, a briefcase, and an umbrella. Okay. Holy, is that Fester? Dude, this is hard. Kill that fucker. Oh my god, you have to kill that fucker. Dude! Oh my god! This game is fucking terrible! I don't even care. Okay, I kinda care. Full life bar. I'm just gonna sit here and fucking... God! There's just so much shit! I feel like he's not killable. So he does get hurt from me. Okay, I thought he had to be hit standing up. This is way easier. There he is. Fuck you, Fester, or whoever you're supposed to be. I just get, he just got back up. What? Hey, I don't know who you are or how you got in here, but I do know that you better keep yourself out of my way. That vault's got my name on it, so butt out, wimpy. I suggest you vacate this property immediately. Dig? Esther? Hey, hey, wait! I thought this was supposed to be all in good fun. You feel okay? Oh boy, this is a weird family. Oh well, I'm sure old Festa is. Is that supposed to be Nick Tortelli? I hope. And I, it's not bad voice, I guess. It's not. It doesn't sound like the original actors. God, it's the whole fucking game. Oh my goodness. I, just, I need special keys. I don't, don't think I didn't notice you eyes. Oh shit. You, go ahead. Go ahead. Hit me. I knew it. Oh fuck. This is boss battles? It's gonna be boss battles. So now I have to be Lurch, huh? This is really lazy game making. I can't even climb the stairs. I have to jump. How bad is that? There's no climb animation. If I push left or up angle, it doesn't do it. I'm about to die, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad for it, too. The, I'm gonna let this drop of rain kill me. Of course, because it's rain. Of course it kills me. So you something different? Oh, it's only health for the over. 
Yeah, Adams Family, guys. Uh, run out and buy your own copy today. eBay. Can't be that much. All right, so this video is pretty much over. Um, I had a lot of other games I know I didn't touch. I may play them on stream from time to time. Um, but the next thing I'm going to do is probably the EverDrive that I got for the TurboGrafx 16 slash PC Engine, so I can try some different games for that. I'll look up, I don't, I'm not too familiar with Japanese uh, Turbo Chip games or Hue cards, so I'll look up to see which ones are good ones to play on that, and we'll, we'll do a separate video for that. Also, the Super Graphics, I went ahead and um, decided in those two weeks that have passed since I started making this video that uh, we're going to go ahead and work with the Super Graphics and get that going. So I'm going to take out the Core 2 and put in the Super Graphics because I have a, an EverDrive that plays both PC Engine and Triple Graphics games without modification on either system, um, I won't need to have a region mod to play those uh, Triple Chip games or Hue card games. And one more thing is I do need to get an arcade CD or arcade upgrade card, one of these for their, oh, so I can play, I have a couple of arcade, or at least one arcade game, I think I have two actually. Um, so I'm looking to get one of those, they're like 60, 70 bucks, I'm trying to look for a good deal. But other than that, um, this video is over. I hope you enjoyed it. Unfortunately, we have to end on Adam's family, but say la vie. Until next time.